statement in recognition of and with respect for indigenous peoples as traditional stewards of the land that we now call the city of San Diego. For millennia, the Kumeyaay people have been part of this land. This land has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced them for many generations in a relationships of, in relationship of balance and harmony. As members of the San Diego community and inhabitants of Ma'atipai, Ma Kumeyaay territory, we acknowledge this legacy. We promote this balance and harmony. We find inspiration from this land the land of the Kumayai. I want to remind my fellow commissioners that we provided you a copy of our agenda, the meeting minutes, and some background materials on subcommittees. Uh, and you can also find us on our commission website. And now our commissioner roll call. Uh, Vice Chair Tyler Duncan. Present. Fantastic. Uh, Chair Emeritus, Nicole Ramirez, Murray Ramirez. Yes. Um, Commissioner Olympia Beltran. Thank you. Commissioner Ricky Brown. Right. Commissioner M.H. Field. Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner April Purcell. Present. Commissioner Danielle Walker. Present. And I am here, Judy Thomas. Uh, tonight we have some excused absences. Uh, Sarah Brown, um, Ryan Trabuco, uh, Faye Detsky Wild, and Jessica Diaz Roman, uh, and also Julia Legaspi. And let's keep her in your thoughts. Um, our second item today or, or the, as part of our second item today is a comment on, on roll call yeah my understanding uh, and i'm very close to uh, commissioner Legowski. Uh, i just general rumors can i actually speak in the mic please hey, thank you uh, i'm very close friends with Commissioner Legaspi. I don't think uh, she'll be returning to the commission. Uh, and though it's in her heart, she's loved this commission for a long time. But I will have a talk with her because I think it will, because we count her as, as an absentee. And that would give us uh, better uh, quorum wise. But uh, I'll, I'll have a talk with her because I, I think she would see that it's the right thing to do, especially to help uh, with getting the quorum a little bit and practical numbers. But yeah, as, as uh, our chair uh, said, um, if you could once in a while send her a little note or thing, it's it's been a very difficult time for her, but she's with her sister and they have a quite a loving family. So they're definitely watching over her. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Um, as part of us uh, item two, um, we have an action item of uh, approving our minutes from January meeting. So can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Purcell. And a second. Is that you, Ricky? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Brown seconds. Uh, all in favor? Oh, we got, do we have to do a roll call vote or? Okay, uh, we'll start here with um, Commissioner Duncan. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Purcell. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner Beltran. Commissioner Brown. And Commissioner Fields. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have one abstention and no opposition. All right. Uh, item three, uh, Executive Director Gerald Brown, would you like to share with us about the agenda and non-agenda public comment? Good evening, commissioners and, uh, and those that are online. Um, I am... Um, 
proud to serve as the executive director for the Human Relations Commission, and we're going to cover public comment. Public comment on an agenda item. If you wish to address the board on an item for today's agenda, please complete and submit a speaker's form before the board hears the agenda item. You will be called at the time the item is heard. Public comment on matters not on the agenda. You may address the board on any matter not listed on today's agenda. Please complete and submit a, a speaker's form. However, California Open Meeting Law Open Meeting Laws do not permit the board to discuss or take action on on the matter at today's meeting. At its discretion, the board may add the item to a future meeting agenda or refer the matter to staff or committee. Individual comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. At the discretion of the chair, if a large number of people wish to speak on the same item, comments may be limited to a set period of time per the item. So that is on public comment on agenda items and public comment on matters not on the agenda. Thank you, Gerald. Mm -hmm. um, are there any non-agenda public comment? There are none. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, item four, in celebration of Black History Month, we have invited, we had invited Assistant Chief Terrence Charlo from the SDPD. Chief Charlo is a third generation officer and oversees patrol uh, for all of San Diego. And uh, commissioners, excuse me, Chair, um, I received a call today uh, from the Assistant Chief Terrence uh, Charlo and uh, he apologized, but he said he wouldn't be able to make it this evening. Thank you. Um, in writing this uh, introduction to him or of him, um, I noticed some things that were a little odd. And so I wanted to address them in his introduction, um, but, and then let him take it from there. But um, since he's not here, I thought maybe we could just have a, a brief discussion if you guys wanted to about uh, SDPD and our um, partnership with the uh, board, um, police advisory board, and how we want to move forward with that. So, uh, and we have two people who, Ricky, you were, you're on it still or no? And Nicole, you were on it, right? Uh, yes, I was uh, on it, uh, on Mayor Faulkner's uh, selection uh, committee. The current one, no one's supposed, it's supposed to be confidential. But um, my understanding is that there is, uh, there were seven finalists and they were interviewed and it the appointment by the mayor should be coming forth and then the city council will of course vote on it. Uh, but we had, uh, uh, they had, whoever they are, two outstanding African-American uh, officers uh, that my understanding is they impressed a lot of people. So obviously it's for uh, the qualifications and stuff, but I, I think the mayor will pick the right one, hopefully. Of, of the of finalists, they were all they were all actually outstanding candidates. I could see fifty five applied. Who wants to be a police chief nowadays? But fifty five outstanding uh, applications were submitted, but seven were the finalists. Thank you. Um, so, what I found when I was uh, researching stuff so I could give him a good introduction was that we are very underrepresented on our police force with um, our black and brown and Asian populations here. Um, I think now the um, amount of white uh, police officers is like at 44, 45% of the force and our African-American um, police officers are at 65 So. There's quite a huge disparity there. So I just wanted to bring that up and see how he was going to react to that and what I was going to ask, what is the um, recruiters, what are the recruiters doing to change those numbers? 
Um, Chair Thomas, if I may. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'd like to motion to table this item until we have the um, assistant uh, chief uh, Terrence Charlo maybe potentially present. Or, okay. Or potentially move to uh, maybe facilitate sending them those questions via uh, via email or or some source so that they have the opportunity to review and respond. I'm willing to entertain the uh, tabling it, but I just wanted to bring up one more item, which is how our commission uh, should and might act with the ad advisory board. What kind of uh, relationship should we seek with them? Um, and I don't know if you guys want to have that discussion now also, or you want to add that to uh, vice chair's um, tabling. Yes. There's a motion on the table. Well, does that mean we move to? I want to know if they want to include that into your motion, or do we want to separate it out and say, we'll talk about this, these disparities, but well, the, uh, at a later time, but a quick, uh, yeah. point of order. Um, so this motion is to the on the on the off the deputy chief that was supposed to appear on and those questions and stuff. That's what is that right? right? The motion is to table item four and yeah. Oh, okay, so I yeah, I second that. Okay. Then all those in favor? Aye. All right. Uh any opposed? All right, abstentions. Great. Okay. Move right along. Um, item five, Bayard Rustin Award Honors Award Ceremony. Um, our the date of the event is February 28, 2024. Uh, we took our vote uh, in last uh, over email um, two weeks ago. And thank you everybody for um, uh, working with us on that. Uh, City Council Chambers are re reserved and I'd like to ask uh, Commissioner Ramirez to bring us up to date and talk about uh, what these awards mean. Absolutely, but before I do that, I think even though that the uh, the Deputy Police Chief didn't show up, uh, I think that we all realize in in Black History Month. I agree with people should be celebrated every month. But these are very difficult times. We're in. We, we in California have to. We're in a progressive state. Not to say everything's perfect, but as I read, and I'm sure all of you do, uh, uh, the suppressing of the black vote in so many states, and the erasing uh, uh, attempts to erase and sometimes ex uh, succeeding African history in books, including the Florida Rosa Parks. I mean, taking her out of the history book. You know, it, it's it's. It's not only upsetting, but these are really difficult times that our nation is facing and what is going on. And I would hope that because a lot of people are thinking, and uh, well, why should I vote and stuff? This next election is going to probably be one of the most important. And we always say that, but I think that the best thing we can do on History Month, be it in the African-American community or the Latino or Asian and all the people of color, is it really to turn out the vote and register people for the upcoming election. Uh, and that's all I've got to say on that. And happy Black History Month. Um, I wanna thank the uh, commission for uh, once again, uh, co-sponsoring uh, with the San Diego LGBT Historic Task Force, uh, the Byron Rustin Honors. Uh, this year is gonna be very exciting. And also next year, because I'll explain that. Oh, how many have you seen the the Rustin movie? Yeah. Oh, it's on Netflix. Do you all have Netflix? Anyway, it's a great movie. You should see it. We are honoring uh, with a lifetime achievement award uh, Bruce Cohen, who is the co-producer along with the Obamas, uh, the president President Rock and his uh, wife uh, are co-producers of this. And uh, he accepted, uh, he, he picked out the date because as he told me, he said, this is award season. So every week he's going to some awards, but he's flying in for this. And Secretary of State uh, Shirley Weber has agreed to present him this award. Uh, Shirley Weber is a past recipient and obviously a very iconic civil rights uh, legend in our community. Uh, the you know who the I think all the honorees are everything set uh, 
for the event. I think it's going to be a wonderful event. I'm going to work with the chair and Mr. Brown on getting a, a press release out on this. And uh, you should invite everyone in. And it's going to be, a, I think, a real great celebration. Now, the exciting news is, if you saw the movie, is next year uh, we can honor the actor who played Rustin. Obviously, he's been busy getting nominated for Academy Awards and other rightfully nominations that he's got. So uh, this is, I'm glad that I, myself and Carolina Ramos founded this years ago. I didn't even know who he was. And I met him in Washington, D.C., one of the marches on Washington for LGBT rights. And uh, someone entered, and I thought, I wonder who that elderly uh, man is. And they entered, and then decades later, I found it was him. And I regret it because someone said, you want to take a picture? And I was running around. I was on the executive committee of it. So I, I regret that. And then Carolina Ramos, I don't think, if you have seen, what's the documentary brother? Uh, it's something uh, about him. And I saw it and I went, I felt so ashamed that I didn't know about him. But I found out a lot of people don't. And I want to let you all know that this commission is very historic for being the first uh, government body in the United States, followed by all kinds of government bodies that uh, supported the Harvey Milk stamp that we were successful in. And we're on record for having uh, endorsed the first, the uh, Rustin stamp campaign. And that's looking very good uh, to be unveiled at the White House. Uh, that's the rumor. Let's hope that's where it will be unveiled when they get it. So San Diego has a, a history to this commission of being supportive for those endeavors. So I thank you for that. And I look forward for all of us to uh, celebrate Black History Month with the uh, Rustin honors that are on the 28th. That's next Tuesday, Wednesday, huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> Any discussion? Is that okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'd uh, like to understand a little bit more about some of the event details. Um, if there's any chance you could provide the commission with an update so that we can see how we can maybe leverage um, our support just to make sure we have everything uh, tightened up with the visibility that we're receiving on this event. First thing is everybody has confirmed that they will be here on the awards uh, list. So that's fantastic. Um, Commissioner Fields uh, helped by reaching out to the MLK Choir and they are gonna be here to do uh, the national anthem and the black national anthem. Yes. So just as a reminder, that choir has to leave by seven for um, Ken Anderson to, to make it to his rehearsal. Yeah. Um, is there any way that we can secure a photo opportunity with them and either uh, Dr. Weber and or the producer uh, just to incentivize sure. um, their presence? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, Nicole and I can figure that out and figure out how we do that ahead of time. And then we'll um, work with you on getting that done so that when they get here, they check in with you and then we'll assemble everybody. And, right? and, uh, and Vice Chair, we definitely will get the program and send it out to you on, on, on that evening's uh, program, the agenda. Sounds good. Yes, just want to make sure if there's anything any of us can do that we're aware. Um, it's a six o'clock event, so if you if you could be here five thirty five forty five something like that, that would be great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it is exciting. Thank you, Nicole, for doing that. Uh, item six, subcommittee. Re yes. Uh, before we move on from the uh, Bear Rustin event. Um, I'm glad to hear that there's going to be a program. Can I get a copy of that program? And then also taking um, with uh, what Mr. Fields said, what Commissioner Fields said, uh, we definitely can put the Martin Luther King uh, choir at the top of that. Oh, yeah. The, at the very, the very top. Passion Anthem. We'll go okay. And uh, hopefully it'll be just one or two songs yeah. uh, then. Then you'll come in as, as a chair, you and, and, and vice chair. So um, we we did what about an hour the last time, uh, last program, 
and it went real, real well. And uh, and so you're going to have Shirley Weber, our Secretary of State, and and also I believe that the mayor is going to try to uh, try his best to be here. Oh, he is going to be yes. confirmed today. And so. Um, he wouldn't want Shirley Weber scolding him for <laughs> not greeting her the proper way. <laughs> well, we'll let them handle that. Hey, uh, you know, so when two elephants fight, they have to get grass. I'm not calling either one of them elephants, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. Um, and so, again, that's it's very crucial that as soon as I can see that so that I can do whatever I need to do behind the scenes to, to make that happen. And so. You, uh, everyone on this commission, and including yourself, Mr. Brown, we will have that by Friday. All right, item six, uh, subcommittee report. Um, Tyler Duncan, our vice chair, will take uh, take this next seg segment to explain how commissioners can get involved in the great work we're doing with the Human Relations Commission. In addition, the subcommittee you serve on should also be something related to the work that you're doing in the community and that inspires and activates you. So, Thank you for that great introduction, Chair Thomas. Yes, so we have uh, again looped around to establishing and reestablishing what our subcommittees look like. Again, under our mission to promote activities that foster understanding, respect, and inclusion amongst all San, Di San Diegans, as well as protecting basic human and civil rights. So um, as previously um, discussed and established in some of our strategic planning early in 2022 and 2023, uh, we have five subcommittees currently listed. Uh, we have our subcommittee uh, for San Diego United Against Hate. Um, I'm currently chairing that subcommittee and uh, some of the major functions include partnering with the San Diego Anti-Hate Coalition on a variety of um, different opportunities to promote activities that foster understanding, respect, and inclusion among San Diegans, and making sure also that we have um, everything buttoned up for our San Diego United Against Hate uh, proclamation. Um, remember, we are major, if I won't want to say the author, but definitely the co-author on that proclamation that was signed by the city. So um, establishing our press conference, um, our partnership with the mayor, so on and so forth, and making sure that goes forward is, um, is a major function in that subcommittee. Then we move on to community engagement. Uh, there was an idea of potentially based off of the workload with this subcommittee, there being two co-chairs there. Um, but some of the uh, events would include the HRC awards ceremony, Byron Rustin awards uh, planning and delivery on these topics, as well as any other events or parade participations or recognitions there. Um, additionally, we would hope that there would be some type of outreach. So coordination with the city's uh, communication department or um, uh, finding other methods or ways of getting our word out. Um, so again, the major point there being our visibility in the community so that we're able to advance that mission. Our third subcommittee, um, discrimination and equal protection um, complaints. Um, so this subcommittee uh, is going to be looking into the complaints that we receive in, receive in regards to hate speech or hate crime um, in San Diego, partnering closely with um, our executive director um, to understand how we can um, support those um, those complaints that we receive. Again, a major function of the, com uh, of the commission as listed in our bylaws. So those first three um, uh, commission or subcommittees there are really the meat and potatoes of what's going to keep the commission moving forward. We also um, do have um, uh, on the other end of things as far as more outreach and engagement in the community um, and representing being able to connect with the communities that we represent here. Um, we have our, our subcommittee for an inclusive and welcoming San Diego um, covering uh, immigrant affairs in our indigenous community um, and other communities um, as, de as defined. Um, the scope of this um, subcommittee hasn't really been defined um, and we are uh, hoping to, uh, to solicit some support um, in defining what that scope looks like, how we can connect um, with um, a variety of communities and, and support the commission in that regards. And then we have our protection and advocacy for human and civil rights. Um, uh, this subcommittee um, was to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, and initially was also going to support on the discrimination complaints or the hate crime and speech that, that we receive, um, but it did push out to be in its own subcommittee now. So those are the five that we have. Um, if there are any commissioners that are interested, oh, let's actually keep moving there. So each subcommittee will have a max of five members in accordance with our bylaws. And then um, each commissioner's commitment, we're asking um, each commissioner to um, participate in one uh, subcommittee is strongly encouraged. Um, 
Each subcommittee will uh, meet once a month. Uh, so this is listed under, under the commitment. We'll meet once a month in whatever form or method works best for uh, for that subcommittee. And they will report out during our monthly um, HRC meeting. So this meeting here in regards to what the subcommittees are doing and how they can solicit support. Um, that way we all have a real clear understanding of how we're advancing our mission. So that provides a little bit of um, structure. The ex, um, XCOM's commitment um, would be um, essentially to also participate in at least two uh, subcommittees there. Um, and uh, hopefully if there are subject matter experts that wanna lead subcommittees, we would look to have someone um, facilitate and lead that charge. Um, if not, then we would see what our next best steps would be. Um, if I could mention course, yeah. that at XCOM, we talked about those last two subcommittees as being sort of exploratory, that if somebody wanted to head them up for the purpose of uh, helping to define what they are, that's the subcommittee for inclusive and welcoming San Diego and the subcommittee for protection and advocacy for human and civil rights. Perhaps there's a way to roll those both into one subcommittee if um, in that exploratory process, there was some overlap, basically. So um, yes. if there's somebody who the other three don't sing to you and you would like to help uh, define that, that would be a great uh, way to do it. Perfect. Yes. So um, again, uh, we can move this into discussion. If there is any, we aren't necessarily asking for anyone to volunteer or step up, though, if you do want to volunteer and step up, we'd love to get you on the list. Um, but uh, yeah, just want to answer any questions or uh, have any discussion on the point. I also emailed this out to the commission. So um, you have that as a point of reference as well. Yeah. Um, uh, have these committees already been established or are they being established or what? They've been established. Oh, Okay, so yeah, I have some question on the, uh, as you all know, the uh, San Diego County uh, Human Relations uh, Commission has been suspended. Um, and uh, they were doing within the county, which was a, a good thing. Um, they had community meetings uh, in, in the county, like in Oceanside, Santee, and so forth, and, and South Bay. And, I think that it would be good if we did that at citywide in the seven, the nine districts and that we partner uh, with a local organization uh, and and have a to, uh, how better than them coming to us, us going to them, uh, to their communities and asking them what their interest or what they feel that we should uh, uh, focus on. And also, I think it would be good that we take along a uh, a kind of a survey asking them certain questions. And I think this would get the commission out there uh, more. And I think it would be interesting. I found some of the feedback very interesting on what uh, people in Oceanside and different areas uh, were feeling and wanting us uh, to do. Then I was, I think it's very important and, and I understand that uh, it's we can take stands on assembly bills and state legislation. I think that's very important. It gives us um, a voice in matters that are important, uh, that are before the uh, the state, uh, the assembly and the Senate. It, would that fall under, which one would that fall under? Political action. Mm, as far as the- no, Legislation, why? Yeah, as far as the scope um, on that topic, I think that's something that we could further discuss. Is that something that you're interested in? Yeah, yes. I, yeah, yes. And and I think there's, we would, I think by calling upon the mayor and not only the mayor, but other uh, elected officials to let us know about their bills that they are introducing or they're co-authoring in the state assembly and the state senate. And there's some very important bills as we all know that are going through. Mm -hmm. And I think by adding our, endorsements of them yes would would be a very good thing can i ask how the turnout was at those meetings and how you reached out to the communities to let them know where the meetings were going to be very good question i'm glad you asked that um i'm going to be very honest it's a matter of record uh these meetings i think the thought and idea uh, was great uh, but you're talking about a 30 member commission and about eight commissioners showed up and I'm going to give an example. 
you know, you're in Santee or Oceanside and you go out of your way to go to these meetings and you're aware of the 30s members and stuff, it it didn't look good and it was that way for three meetings that uh, people were absent. That is why, but it was a good start for us because then uh, what I felt would make it work better is the commission just held them. I think the commission to partner with a local organization then gives it more uh, support and visibility. The people that did show up had some, I, I learned a lot and a lot of us got good input. The sad situation was the commission itself didn't, the, the members didn't show up. Uh, I think and we all realize if we have such thing, it's a very important uh, to show up, uh, but it was a great idea. Uh, and I think it would be a great idea for it's never we've never done this in the history of this commission uh, to go within the nine districts and and also maybe partner with and get more inf uh, information from the council representative from that district. Yes, oh, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Ramirez, for for that feedback. That was um, as Commissioner Thomas was uh, alluding to um, under our previous um, interim executive director, Child Chida Warren Darby from District Four. That was one of the major initiatives that we were working on there with establishing those listening sessions in the dis in the different communities. Um, our first one actually was accomplished um, there in District Four as well with her support. Um, with that uh, being said, I think that that is a great idea and something we should continue to push forward. How how was that, by the way? What uh, was it? Yes, it was, it was great. Good. Yes, we yeah. had a variety of uh, support there. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead. I think uh, we had brought that up as a point that we wanted to maybe fit under um, a subcommittee. What it sounds like is you're recommending to fit that under the community engagement subcommittee? Yes. Yes. Are you open to um, participating on yes. the committee? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. That may be something that we can probably bite off. I know it's a, a big lift there um, and maybe make into a little bit more digestible for, for us, but definitely appreciate you bringing that forward. Um, was there any other thoughts on subcommittee uh, participation or any type of um, questions, clarifying questions or ideas? We also would love to hear about different ideas or um, ways that you could uh, see the commission heading. Um, Commissioner Fields? I, I would absolutely love, but <clears throat> I'll it's on. Uh -huh. um, I would absolutely love to participate in at least two of these, but I don't want to step on any toes. So um, the San Diego United Against Hate would mm -hmm. be a beautiful opportunity. Um, obviously, if, if there are holes in others, mm -hmm. um, just my line of work would fall nicely under that. Um, it also would be a personification of what I'm trying to teach my students to do. Um, so just as consideration, understand that I would definitely want to do it, but I would rather yield to if enough people want to do it, I'm willing to take a step back, but I definitely would be interested, um, because I'm so junior to this commission. I don't want to absolutely step on anyone's toes. That is not a criteria. Thank you. You're hired. <laughs> you. not a criteria. We appreciate you're you. the chair. You're not, <laughs> no. just, we express, appreciate you um, expre expressing interest and um, we can definitely follow up on how to get you um, involved with that subcommittee as well. What's the other one that you're interested in? Commissioner? The discrimination and equal protection one is interesting just because of the 14th Amendment and my familiarity with the 14th Amendment, I just don't know if I could mentally take the stress that comes with discrimination, equal protection, San Diego United Against Hate, then my class load that deals a lot with equity um, and fights against that, I think that would mentally bog me down to a, a, a place that I don't know if I'm willing to go. Yeah, it would just be all encompassing, I think. All right, any further discussion? Again, um, I did go ahead and send out a copy. I'll send out an updated copy with the interest that um, has been expressed tonight and we'll continue to hopefully uh, move these subcommittees forward so that we can advance our mission of why we're here representing our districts and our community, um, communities to promote activities that foster understanding, respect and inclusion and to protect human and uh, civil rights. All right, that is it for me. Thank you. Thank you. It, I, 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 oh, okay. yes.
Um, can you tell me when you ex when you would like to have these finalized? Yes. Um, I don't know what I put in my email off the top of my head. I don't know if I gave a deadline. I tried Never to mind. I did read the email. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I try to give a smart goal usually in there, but um, I'll look. Yeah. but yes, um, hopefully, hopefully sometime soon. Of course, we can't get the commissions up and running, but from the interest that I've received tonight, it looks like we have um, enough interest to at least get the uh, first three subcommittees off the ground. So potentially, um, I would probably I will probably take lead in coordinating them, not necessarily um, facilitating the uh, the meeting, but definitely coordinating the logistics behind the scenes. I don't mind that at all for the first meeting or two. Thank you. Yes. Vice Chair Duncan, did you do this? Yes. You did a really outstanding job. Well, um, the framework was put in by Dolores uh, Gonzalez come up and um, uh, uh, come, uh, Pratt, past chair uh, Kristen Rizzo. Um, yes. And then Secretary Duncan, as well as uh, chair, by, uh, chair. Well, you um, all did a great job. Yes, I, uh, a group effort. Very professional. I Thank you. Yes. We impressed. wanted to bring this back to life. This is an essential um, yeah. Uh, just to speak into that space, thank you for opening it up. I believe in stepping into the gap. Um, but, you know, in recognition of trying to do something bigger, which, you know, we're sitting in in city cha chambers right now. Um, I don't know if anyone else um, feels that type of um, due diligence to really push the work that we're doing forward. But this type of framework, I believe, is a, is a key to going to make that happen. So I appreciate everyone's support and feedback. <laughs> So, um, yes, yes, Mr. Vice Chair, I, I hear a deadline. So, are we talking about a deadline by our next meeting mm -hmm. I'll of circle. having these uh, subcommittees populated? Uh, yeah, uh, I want to allow an opportunity for any commissioners that have any additional feedback to right. reach out to me. Um, but everyone should expect an email from me within the week. Okay, so we, are we looking at a timeline of March the 30th or somewhere around there? I can, yeah, I can get you a date soon. Gotcha. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, just to let you know that uh, on the subcommittee, I'm trying to get back to it here, on the subcommittee on discrimination and equal protection complaints, uh, we are planning at the, at the leadership and move of the uh, chair to have um, the city attorney come in next month to give us an overview of that uh, subcommittee and what, they're, what they are looking at as city attorneys that need to be done. Um, as I mentioned some time ago, the last time I was here, uh, a lot of the discrimination cases are outside of the city of San Diego. So we get discrimination cases from Chula Vista, from Oceanside from all those things and what had happened. I don't know what I don't know what happened when, when Chider I know she um did structure. I would usually forward those back over to the county's HRC because they're not in our jurisdiction. But we'll have a we'll have a, a conversation, a discussion about what's in our jurisdiction and what's not in our jurisdiction. Because in San Diego County, we have one point, I'm sorry, in San Diego City, we have about 1.4, 1.5 million people. And then the county has 3.3 million. And so you have a county HRC and you have a city HRC. Well, the purpose of the city HRC is to uh, work with all the other HRCs around and also have the jurisdiction over this. What does that mean to have the jurisdiction and what can we do? What's the limit of, of the power of the HRC once you have a discrimination, uh, you found it and it's been sustained. So we've got to take a look at all of that for, for next month. Also, the partnership on the inclusive and welcoming San Diego, um, very important now. Um, we have the Immigration Affairs Committee, uh, which I was over them at one time as well. Um, I think that the partnership, as Commissioner Ramirez mentioned, is very important because we could do some things and we could do some things with, with partners that just gets everybody moving forward. And so the Immigration uh, Affairs Committee, which was in fact the chair, I'm sorry, the executive director of the Human Relations Commission at one time, uh, they are looking on who they can reach hand in hand with because that's a big issue now. 
immigration has been a huge issue for for years now, but it's getting even bigger now as we, especially being in a border town. So I just wanted to throw that out there to everyone. Thank you, and you can retain the mic because uh, item seven is our executive director's report. Item seven. Uh, so as you see there, we have the action item for an election, and that was going to be for our secretary, uh, Mr. Ryan Chabuka, I, I think it is, Chabuko, Chabuko. Uh -huh. and uh, of course he's not here, so we can't have that election, unless one of you want to be the secretary for the commission. So not hearing anything, uh, we will wait till Mr. Jabuka comes in, and then you can vote uh, for him to come. I, I thought we did that last voted meeting. Too. They voted for the chair and the vice chair. Okay. And uh, Mr. Jabuka wasn't here. So to be fair to him, he, he's... I see. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm not going to let anybody nominate you for something and put you on the seat when you're not here, so... He will motion to table that until next meeting. Does he want the position? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can I get a second on that motion to table that? Thank you, uh, Commissioner Brown. Um, all in favor? Okay. Appointments and resignations. We are, um, I say we, being Chad and I, are, are looking at appointments. Uh, and some of you have recently uh, recently uh, got your reappointment. Uh, let's just say when they happen, please, please contact the city clerk, all right? Because otherwise, I will get 20 emails, which I don't mind 20 emails, but asking where are you, then I'll see the emails going to you. And so I'm not going to call out any names today, but those folks know who they are. Uh, and they would like to get that taken and uh, get you sworn in. Uh, I'm going to say that the way that it's supposed to work is you are, you've been voted in for the period of time that you're there. It ends January the 1st every year, or begins to do January the 1st every year. So if you're not voted in, then you may not be able to vote. And so let's get that done quickly, okay? Because we know that you already have been approved and, and you got the letter and everything else, but council requires for everyone to be sworn in as quickly as possible. It, and I'm not blaming you, I'm just saying, you know, okay, you blaming you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so please, let's, uh, let's make it happen and I'll be hearing from Alex again. Uh, resignation. Uh, it is required that when you resign that you submit a letter of resignation. And so uh, please, we just now went through that where uh, China called me one day. We knew that the individual had been moved on to another place, but I thought that he could serve on both. I was wrong. We, we know, should mention a name here. Um, you want to mention Godwin Higa yes. um, was part of our commission for a very long time and a great asset to us, but he also serves on the Gang Violence Commission, and you can't be on two commissions at once from what we understand now. So, uh, no, that's early. Well, actually, you can be on two commissions. It's if they enter, because that's why I had to step down from this commission when I got appointed to the police uh, advisory commission. And... Uh, then I had to step down there to come. They asked me once they, I got there, which one would I rather be? And I thought, I got this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had to step down. I apologize. I don't think I sent a letter. I just told people <laughs> and, my mistake. And we're sorry. We didn't, we didn't want uh, Commissioner Hagar to be, be hurt or anything like that. He wanted to do both. Yeah, he was credit. really, really bummed about it. Yeah, he really wanted to do both. And we wanted to make sure that we kept it, but we were told otherwise. I was told otherwise. And so that's where we are, you know. And then the gang commission uh, executive director uh, say he's mine now. Okay, so th there we are. 
Brown Act and Robert Rules of Order. Um, so the Brown Act uh, is still the same. It has not changed, and we are still in a hybrid mode. Um, if you are going to be absent from uh, the commission for whatever reason, please send a email to the chair and to myself to let us know. Uh, one, because we're going to look at quorum. Two, you're you're invaluable. You're you're everything that you know is invaluable to this commission. We really need to have you here as often as possible. And so um, we still are going back and forth with Sacramento uh, to hopefully give us uh, some more times so that people can uh, be away from the commission and be uh, kind of hybrid. But as it stands now, they're not going back to that unless we are uh, going back in COVID or something like that. And so we are back here uh, in this area. And we can also, we're open to go to any, and I heard this just a few minutes ago, we can go to any area of the city that's in the city. And so I would like to go to all of your neighborhoods, come to your community, the HRC, the commissioners are coming to hear what you have to say. And so that's the way that, you know, we get that out there. Uh, Robert Rules of Order. Uh, there's some controversy over this. Uh, this was done during this, yes, sir. The heels of uh, Vice Chair Duncan's discussion of the subcommittees. How how does that interplay with the uh, the Brown Act? Do Would we have to follow in subcommittee meetings that it's not under okay cool yeah you 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 see the less you're listening five you five unless it, as long as you're listening to quorum all right you're good you're good that's that's good when you start going to meeting quorum or having serial meetings then we are stepping in, in a point that's why i ask for all of you when you respond to an email that's been sent to all of you uh, you'll most likely is you'll see the chairman, the vice chair, the secretary. You see Chatter's name on there, where everybody else has been BCC'd. Okay, so you don't see those names that have been BCC'd. So I will ask of you to respond to me direct. This way, everybody else doesn't know what's going on. This say what your vote is, what what your thoughts are. It comes directly to me, and we're not having a meeting about it. So that's the way that. Does, does that mean the events? What's interesting about that is in my head, so the MLK parade just happened. So if there is a number, because I think on the the Brown Act um, training, it was talking about we can't be in one place meeting um, lunch, et cetera, et cetera, at a quorum or higher. How do we avoid that for events? He, go ahead. Sure. No, 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 no. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll add. Go ahead. So my uh, understanding of it is for events and stuff, you're not really discussing uh, business. And so um, to show up and show support for something is fine, just as long as we're not. The, um, the other little weird caveat on this is social media. So we can't like and share each other's uh, posts. So that becomes part, uh, like a serial meeting. So if and Nicole likes and shares my thing and then you like his thing, then, you know, once we get to eight people, we're having a meeting basically because we're all in accordance. So. But that's just for things related to the commission. Yes, correct. Um, and are we allowed? <clears throat> I thought for the Brown Act, we weren't allowed to have one on one discussions about um, business. I don't think so. I think you can have one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, like one-on-one -on -one discussions. Like Tyler's going to reach out to you about the subcommittee okay. that you want to be on. That's totally allowable. And okay. Going, but going back to uh, Commissioner Fields' statement and and the chair's statement, uh, all of you are in here now. You know, and of course this is a meeting. But if there was something else going on here, and all of you were here. As the chair said, just as long as you're not talking about business, mm -hmm. 
You're not talking about anything business. Somebody starts talking to you about business of, of the commission. You turn around and say, thank you very much, but I can't talk to you about that and and, yeah. and, and move on. You know, uh, I hate to do it that way, but that's the way that uh, it's written. So by all means, it's kind of like um, Commissioner Sarah Brown's event. And folks were wanted to go to that, and they were told, "No, you can't go there." Yes, you can. Yeah, just don't talk about business, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm sorry, folks. I I love you guys. I really do. But I'm not talking about y'all all the time. I'm not talking about the commission all the time. Yeah. You know, even though I love what the commission does, it's not a, a focal focal point. And and Tyler, uh, Commissioner Duncan, uh, we talk, but we don't talk about business. And so I try to keep it there. So I would ask you to do the same. At Robert Rules of Order. Robert Rules of Order. Uh, as the chair pointed out, in the 70s, this thing was popular. <laughs> okay. Not that it, I know. Yeah. And and I have my I have my book, my my book, uh, thick book of Robert Rules of Order. Um, you know, what I'll say is that it can help and not hurt. You know, and, and the reason this is coming up is because there's a training, there's a training. Uh, that we're all invited to take. Um, and the state is um, doing Robert's Rules of Orders again. And so the city is falling in line with that uh, to eliminate any kind of conflict. So the that is on the 28th as well uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 to 30. Wasn't the date changed or something? Uh, it was changed from this earlier this oh, month yeah, to the 28th. Okay. And so, uh, so if anybody's available, jump and, in. And I think so. there's a um, an online one that you can watch. It's going to be. Um, I, I don't know exactly what they're doing for this one, but there is a. You can resend that yes. out to everybody again. And what, what normally happens is China has the training, all of our trainings have been recorded. And so you can always go back and watch it. And the, the training initially was for the staff that's here, the liaisons to uh, to the Board of Commission. But uh, she opened it up to everyone because she wants everyone to get this training uh, when you're here. Uh, code of Conduct update. Um, I know that a lot of uh, discussions went around the Code of Conduct. It is in the Rules Committee for the city. And um, I don't know when it's going to be coming out of there. But that's where it's at, you know, because I said to Chada, I said, uh, you know, uh, hey, boss, why don't we just take that, okay, and do that uh, ourselves? You mean, I mean, don't throw no rocks at me. I said, let the HRC do it. We'll do the code of conduct. They haven't did, did anything yet, so we'll we'll take a stab at it. She said, no, it's already done. It's already, it's already in the rules. And so it should be coming out, I don't know, probably this year sometime or another. What, what spurred that was the uh, county yeah. HRC's problems. And we really wanted to set ourselves uh, apart and different uh, within the city of San Diego and make sure those kinds of uh, conflicts would not happen again. Um, and the code of conduct was uh, then talked about and put together. Yep. Yeah, um, but what was important to note, and thank goodness we have a strong chair because uh, a chair can call things out of order. And the sad thing about all this that happened there was, if you would see it, and there's recordings of it, is the chair did not call the language out of order and the person kept going and going. And that was a problem. A chair can call. And, and I think that any chair would know what was should not be uh, said in attacks at, at, at any any commission meeting, let alone a human relations commission. So I'm glad to hear that because we know there's a lot going on in this world and people are, are very upset and do come to meetings and start voicing sometimes sad to say hate and dislike or something. And so I'm glad to hear that. When did, when did you say they were going to probably well, be... Well, they've been teasing this for about six months now Yeah, um, I don't know when, that it's when. almost done. So it'll be almost done in about three months, maybe. <laughs> hopefully by hopefully by the end of this year, it will be done. We'll have it in our hands long before that. Lord, the end of the year, now you're there. Huh? 
<laughs> uh, I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on for review of quorum and bylaw actions items. Um, we, we are always in discussion about quorum, as we had a discussion today about quorum. And, and the, the real issue is that we are set at 17. We're set at 17 members for the HRC um, that we can in fact have. And even though, you know, folks don't go through life and become ill and everything else, they're still on, on there. And the, even if we move them, we still have to replace them. And so we're in the process of looking to get more great candidates uh, on the commission. Um, and I do believe that we are going to revisit this quorum issue, but uh, again, this is above my pay grade. And so they have to establish this uh, by the council, uh, city council, whether that they're going to either lower the, uh, lower the, the uh, quorum or raise it. Now to lower the quorum, the uh, quorum, they're going to have to lower that 17 number. It is challenging. Let me just say this as the executive director. It is challenging uh, because the chair is on me. Uh, last Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, hey, do we have quorum? You know, let's call for quorum. That's one of the big, big issues. You know, if I get a call from my boss, hey, are you guys going to have quorum? When I leave you tonight, I'm going to text. We had quorum. We made quorum. And so it's, it's important that we can do the business, the business of the commission. And then it's also important because uh, your time is valuable. Your time is very valuable. And so we don't want to just come here and do anything. We want to do, as the chairs did this evening, go directly to business. So I just wanted to, uh, to mention that. Uh, bylaw actions. Uh, we did, in fact, get a, a copy of the bylaws from uh from Commissioner Chabuka, Buko, and uh, we will be going over those uh, as well to make sure they are in line with what we have from the city. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, also, as an action item, uh, the chair uh, in the executive committee had a conversation as it relates to uh, our time of beating. And we realize that it's difficult sometimes for people to get here at 5.30. You know, is there another time or discussion that you would like to have about the time? And I'll toss this over to the chair. Okay, so we'll start there and then we'll back up a little bit. So um, at our last meeting, we talked about moving this meeting time from uh, instead of 5.30 to 6 o'clock and then putting a cap on it at an hour and 15 minutes. That is the extent of the meeting. So everybody can get out of here on time and get home to your families or to prepare for tomorrow or the week ahead of you. Um, but we should uh, put this as an action item. Um, it would, this, uh, the commissioners that we have here today are most a lot different than what we had the last time. So I think we're all caught up on this mm. um, and we can, debate it or discuss it uh, at our next meeting and, and bring it up as an action item. Okay. It works. Is that cool with everybody? Would anybody like to weigh in on that and see? Yes. So can I make a motion on that? That we... So we have to bring it as an action item. Yeah, it has to be noticed. Oh. It has to be noticed and brought as an action item. Today is just an informational, you know, discussion item. So... OK, uh, and then just to back up a little bit on the quorum thing, I, I mean, this is like taking up too much of our time, but just as a point of clarification, mm -hmm. um, Executive Director uh, Brown, who is the person that that told us that it's the quorum is based on how many seats you have and not how many seats you're filled that you have filled? And you might have to check with Chida about that because I know she was a stickler about it and and mentioned names. And so we would like to know who those names are. And this is a good, that's a good question because next month 
we're going to bring the lawyer in. Yeah. The attorney, right? And the last time he mentioned forum, right? And uh, she says, this is two and a half years ago, or two years ago, she said that we should be at about 12 then. I, I know that's not the case. Yeah. Right? It's usually 50% 50, 50 plus one is usually how to yes. look at quorum. And so if that's the case, then it's, it's half of 17 plus one. And we're at 18.5. You can go to 9.5. You don't have half a person. You can say nine or you can say eight. And so I, I chose to round down. Uh, so we get folks here Yeah, uh, that just made more sense to me. And so we'll be able to answer that question about court. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, not at this time. Was there a discussion on time? Anybody have any feedback for discussion on potential times? So, no. All right. Okay. Um, in XCOM or executive committee, we talked about um, our executive committee report being uh, one report rather than uh, each individual of ours. And so um, I'll start off with saying that um, Commissioner Higa at our last, last meeting made a great recommendation. And I, I really like the idea. Um, I would like to kick this idea down to um, the subcommittee for, um, tell me, Don. <laughs> Tyler, which one is it? Yeah, community engagement. Um, it was sort of uh, another way that we could reach into our nine communities are by um, elevating people who are doing good in those communities and giving them a uh, certificate or recognition. Um, this person came to us by way of Ricky Brown uh, last year, Essie Mae Horn, and she hasn't really fit into any one of our uh, awards that we've done. So as the first of one of these things and letting the commission take it, I reached out to the mayor's office to get a certificate um, for mayor recognition for Essie Mae Horn. Uh, they called me just before this meeting started and said, oh, your, your certificate's ready. So I picked it up on my way up here, and we are going to convene at Danielle's um, uh, Cafe in District 4, uh, where uh, I think Essie Mayhorn resides, and uh, Ricky Brown is going to be there, too. We'll get some pictures, and we'll do a nice little presentation uh, for her. So kind of a nice little thing. Um, and then just as a as something for that subcommittee, it doesn't have to come from the mayor. It's beautiful that it came from the mayor, but it could come from the HRC. We could have our own uh, certificate made. And yes, actually, we do have a certificate. Yeah, uh, I'll We've, bring. I'll send you. We have. When I was chair, we made some up and we passed it on. I think Bruce probably Bruce didn't pass it on uh, okay. to. Yeah, but there is a really beautiful certificate, and I I think what you said is. Is, is right, Chair, uh, is that we sh it should come from us and it should have uh, ours. And we can have actually the seal and everything. And the, the certificate has to be approved. I, I think, what was Mayor? Mayor Sanders, I think, and he approved it. So yeah, definitely we would, yeah, I'll get right. that and then I'll talk to the mayor about right. approving it. All right, beautiful. Um, so that's one item from me. You have anything else? Please, Chair. Uh, no, just do want to talk a little bit if you want to share the event that um, we got to participate in. Oh, with, yeah. With Commissioner um, Diaz Roman. Um, so we uh, participated in the MLK March uh, in District 4. Uh, it was a great, great time, and we were very well received. Uh, we were there amongst with the mayor. We were there with Chida, um, Latrell from Economic Development. Uh, and Supervisor his boots. Montgomery. Yeah. Like Montgomery, yes. Supervisor Montgomery Step. So it was a great event. And uh, we got some great pictures and really got to interact with the community there. And it was great. Oh, and we now have a we now have a banner. So whenever we want to uh, do one of these things, we're ready to go. Have banner, we'll roll. All right. That's it for item eight.
Any discussion? Um, item nine is commissioner comments. So um, this is a great time for those of us who haven't said all we wanted to say yet. Um, maybe you want to on anything? Nope. Anyone? No. Okay. Um, then our yes. Yes. May May I ask a question of uh, the communities that you represent? Can you give us one or two things that's happening in those communities right now? that we as an HRC should possibly be looking at? Yeah, I love that uh, as a great way to start discussion that way, but also our involvement, our community involvement. And if you see something coming up two or three months in advance, it's even better uh, so that we can position ourselves to be a part of, uh, we are coming up on Trans uh, Day of Visibility. And so uh, we definitely want to uh, be a part of that, and that's coming up on the end of March. Yes. Have, have uh, uh, cards uh, been issued to this commission? No cards yet, and he's making up some... Uh, badges? Yeah, badges. Well, no, not only badges, the cards. It's very important, I, I'm sure that all of you attend community events, that you, when you go to the event, you go to the organizer and go, hi, I'm representing the City Human Relations Commission. You give them your card, and nine out of 10, they'll announce that you're there, which gives us visibility. But of course, this city usually pays for these cards and gives them to the commissioners, and you put your information on there, and it says that you're uh, on this commission and representing them at these events. Gotcha. I think that's very... So you said you're already doing that. Yeah, well, he's doing the badges. We don't have cards, but... I think this is a, a great discussion to have, and I think we'll bring it up at XCOM next. Um, while um, Executive Director Brown has reminded us that we have no budget, um, it is unfortunate, and but that doesn't mean that we have to accept that as the law. So when did our budget? And we usually had a, what happened? I don't know. We don't know, but this is what they've said for the past three years. What I would like to do is I'd like to come up with a budget and then ask for it. So it would be planning out our events and saying how much we need for those, these cards, uh, whatever it, you know, it is that we need. And then let's figure out where that money comes from. Do we get it from private donors? Do we get it from um, the city? And then how do we move forward with that? So uh, I think at XCOM, we'll take that up uh, on our next one and then bring it forward and see if there isn't a subcommittee that would like to, or even an ad hoc that would like to crunch those numbers and figure this out. Yes. It's been my observation for the last five years here, and I've only been with the city for five years and I worked with them about 20 years before. Um, if you build it, they will come, mm -hmm. uh, is the saying. And so when the HRC starts to do what's on this list and we begin to act, and I'm, I'm going to say this, use this word, but I don't mean totally independent, independent in the sense that we're doing and working, uh, I think that you will see that that money will, will come. I also think that as as the as the chair mentioned and the vice chair, is that these partnerships will be key parts of that. Okay, because everything we don't necessarily need money for, we can get some in kind donations and those types of things. And one of the things I'm hopeful for is just as um, my uh, my colleague on the gang commission, they just got the three million dollar grant. Mm -hmm. They got $3 million. It's been two and a half years. They still haven't distributed any of their funds out, but they're working it out and they have the money there. And so I see the HRC, this HRC in the city of San Diego, being able to do that and, and then some. You know, and then we also, and I don't know who else does the research, but I'm looking at other HRCs across the country. You know, and one of the things that has not happened, and I'm on the California HRC, is all the HRCs getting together 
and finding out that we have more in common than we do apart. And you see some of the same things of, of discrimination and all those different things uh, going on in every major city in this country. And so all of us coming together as HRC is to plan how we're going to uh, move uh, I don't like the word attack, but how we're going to stop some of these things that are coming forward, but how we're going to pick up this HRC and use this as a model HRC for the rest of the country.